On behalf of the Palestinian BDS National Committee, BNC, the broadest coalition in Palestinian society and the leadership of the global BDS movement, I salute you, our comrades in struggle in South Africa. I convey to you and through you to the people of South Africa and to its progressive political parties, trade unions, women's groups, farmers' associations, churches, mosques, progressive Jewish groups, student and academic associations, and artists, our deepest gratitude for your solidarity with our liberation struggle. The history of the Palestine Liberation Organization's resolute support for the anti-apartheid struggle in South Africa led by the ANC has never been forgotten by your great leaders like Nelson Mandela, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and many others. It is this unique partnership and struggle that allows Palestinians today to hold South Africa to a higher standard when we call for effective solidarity and for supporting the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions or BDS movement for Palestinian rights, especially at this historic and extremely dangerous juncture in our struggle for self-determination. Many may not know this, but the Trump Netanyahu plan, which aims at liquidating the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people, has explicitly called on Arab regimes to reject BDS. In fact, Israel's the far-right regime of military occupation, settler colonialism and apartheid, which is armed to its teeth with nuclear and conventional weapons and buttressed by endless US and European largesse, is terrified of what it terms the strategic threat of BDS. Why is BDS more important than ever today in the struggle for Palestinian liberation? If the most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed, as the South African Black Consciousness leader Steve Biko once wrote, then BDS is particularly targeted because of its role in decolonizing Palestinian minds, not just in contributing to the decolonization of Palestinian land. Begun in 2005 by the largest coalition in Palestinian society, BDS has become a key part of our popular resistance and the most effective form of international solidarity with the struggle of the indigenous people of Palestine for self-determination and liberation. It calls for ending Israel's 1967 occupation, ending its institutionalized and legalized system of racial discrimination or apartheid, and upholding the right of Palestinian refugees to return to the homes and lands from which they were uprooted and dispossessed since the 1947-48 ethnic cleansing of Palestine, the Nakba. The BDS movement is deeply rooted in decades of Palestinian popular nonviolent resistance and is inspired by the South African anti-apartheid movement, the US civil rights movement, and to an extent, the Indian and Irish anti-colonial struggles. Anchored in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, BDS has consistently and categorically opposed all forms of racism and discrimination, including anti-Semitism. One's identity, the movement upholds, should never diminish or restrict one's entitlement to rights. BDS targets complicity, not identity. It is crucial to emphasize that since there is nothing Jewish about Israel's regime of occupation, siege, ethnic cleansing, and apartheid, there's nothing inherently anti-Jewish then about a nonviolent, morally consistent human rights struggle to end this system of oppression. Based on this inclusiveness, BDS nourishes mutual solidarity with movements defending the rights of refugees, immigrants, blacks, women, workers, indigenous nations, LGBTQI groups, ethnic and religious minorities, etc. A growing number of anti-colonial Jewish Israeli BDS supporters play a significant role in exposing Israel's regime of oppression and advocating for isolating it. As Israel becomes a role model for far-right, xenophobic or authoritarian leaders across the world, from Trump and Salvini to Orban, and from Bolsonaro and Modi to Mohammed bin Salman, BDS is increasingly being recognized as a significant partner in a growing international progressive wave fighting for global justice against the forces of fascism, xenophobia, and savage neoliberalism. Israel's popularity continues to decline worldwide. As a result, 
Defenders of Israel's human rights violations have desperately invested massive political and financial resources in the past few years alone to suppress speech on Palestinian rights and to demonize BDS. Through intimidation, spying, and weaponizing claims of anti-Semitism, they're trying to keep Israel on a pedestal, as Archbishop Desmond Tutu once said, above accountability and beyond censure. Israel and its supporters are desperately attempting to suppress support for Palestinian rights and to ensure impunity for its war crimes and crimes against humanity. From the start of the Great March of Return in 2018, which aims at ending Israel's br brutal siege of Gaza and to assert the right of refugees to return to their homes, Israeli army snipers have implemented what Human Rights Watch calls a premeditated shoot-to-kill-or-maim policy. Israel has slaughtered dozens and injured thousands of our peaceful protesters in that march, including children, medics, journalists, people with disabilities, all prompting UN investigators to conclude that Israel's acts in Gaza, quote, may constitute war crimes or crimes against humanity. Israel's siege has included counting the per capita calories that are allowed into the Gaza Strip in order to keep the two million Palestinians there on the brink of starvation. It has reduced Gaza into not just a prison camp, as even David Cameron once described it, but into an unlivable territory this year, according to the United Nations. Israel's land-grabbing construction of illegal settlements, its gradual ethnic cleansing, especially in Jerusalem, the Jordan Valley, and the Naqab, are also accelerating. Israel's increasing home demolitions, arrest, and torture of children, and its apartheid walls are designed to make our lives so bitter that we would transfer ourselves, as one honest Israeli minister once admitted. In 2015, then South Africa's Speaker of Parliament, Ms. Bale Kambete, said, quote, Apartheid in South Africa was a picnic compared to what we have seen in the occupied Palestinian territories, end of quote. This is what the ongoing Palestinian Nakba looks like. In the BDS movement, we're fighting back. Major international trade union federations, COSATO was the first, but also the UK Trade Union Congress, the Brazilian CUT, and many others have endorsed BDS. The largest farmers union in India, with 16 million members, and a major progressive coalition of Indian women's groups, with 10 million members, have also endorsed BDS. The cultural boycott of Israel is growing steadily. Celebrity singers like Lana Del Rey, Shakira, and Lord, among many others, have canceled performances in Tel Aviv, or never scheduled performances to start with while more than 100 DJs and electronic music artists joined the cultural boycott of Israel under the hashtag DJs for Palestine. Instead of attracting the anticipated 40 to 50,000 visitors, Eurovision in apartheid Tel Aviv only attracted about 4 to 5,000. Major corporations like Veolia and Orange suffered major losses or reputational damage due to BDS campaigning forcing them to completely abandon their illegal projects in Israel. The city of Dublin in 2018 became the first European capital to adopt BDS for Palestinian rights. Mainstream churches in South Africa have endorsed BDS, while major churches in the US, including the Presbyterian Church, the United Methodist Church, and others, have divested their pension funds from companies and banks implicated in Israel's illegal occupation. <clears throat> Ilhan Omar and Rashid Atleb made history by becoming the first two sitting members of the US Congress to publicly endorse BDS and to survive it. And the Democratic presidential frontrunner Bernie Sanders has defended the right to advocate for BDS and called for leveraging US aid to Israel to hold it accountable to international law. Tens of cities, cultural institutions, and public spaces in the Spanish state, Italy, Belgium, Norway, Ireland, and elsewhere have expressed support for Palestinian rights by declaring themselves apartheid-free zones, calling for an arms embargo in Israel or excluding from public tenders corporations that are implicated in Israel's crimes. Above everything else, BDS campaigns challenge the complicity of states, corporations, and institutions in Israel's uh, regime of oppression. In South Africa, we rely on the great work of our partners the Palestine Solidarity Groups and supporters of Palestinian rights in progressive parties, trade unions, churches, social movements, the Muslim community, progressive Jewish groups, feminist groups, and so on, 
to defend Palestinian rights and to pressure government to translate in its consistent political support for Palestinian rights into concrete and strategic measures that can significantly aid our liberation struggle. In this context, the BNC is proud to partner with our South African BDS coalition partners. It's the broadest, most inclusive, democratic alliance of groups working for Palestinian rights. Your coalition will lead BDS work in South Africa in coordination with the BNC and our global partners. We officially recognize this coalition as the only entity in South Africa that is affiliated to the global BDS movement and that can carry the BDS name. Some may ask, what about the NGO that has existed for some years now under the name BDS South Africa? As many of you know, this group, as of September 2019, is no longer part of the BDS movement. The BNC, which leads the BDS movement, has informed this group, which led BDS work in South Africa for many years with significant achievements, that it can no longer carry the BDS name. This is due to two factors. First, mishandling and failure to properly investigate serious allegations of sexual harassment. Two, an unexpected and quite unfortunate official position by this organization's board ending accountability to the BNC and, by extension, to the BDS movement's guidelines and ethical principles that are set by the BNC. This sudden breach of years of mutual respect and clear-cut accountability came about after the BNC had urged BDS South Africa to conduct a fair, victim-based investigation of the sexual harassment allegations in line with the movement's principles and to take the appropriate accountability and educational measures if the allegations are proven. This sad development took place after months of private engagement by the BNC with the group's board members about the allegations and after weeks of diligent and highly appreciated mediation efforts by Chief Mandela Mandela with indispensable help from Shireen Uzdin of South African Jews for Free Palestine. We're truly inspired, however, with the great efforts of our partners in South Africa who have for months been working diligently, impressively, to form this BDS coalition, led by Chief Mandela, Mercia Andrews, Ronnie Castrels, and representatives of Palestine Solidarity Organizations. It will include representation from all major trade unions, social movements, and civil society entities. We fully trust that this coalition will rise to the challenge of mobilizing grassroots pressure on government to implement, among others, the following priority measures. One, excluding from public contracts and banning the importation of products of all companies recently listed by the United Nations for their complicity in Israel's illegal settlement enterprise, as well as other companies that are proven to be complicit but are not yet on that list, including HP, G4S, Caterpillar, Hyundai Heavy Industries, among others. Two, declaring a symbolic yet morally significant military embargo on Israel. Three, holding South Africans who have enlisted in the Israeli occupation army accountable to legal prosecution for their involvement in war crimes in accordance with South African law. Four, implement the decisions of the 2006 Non-Aligned Movement Durban Conference to ban all products of Israeli companies operating in the occupied Palestinian territory and ban entry of all Israeli settlers into South Africa. Five, and last, issuing guidelines to South African citizens and businesses in line with, but hopefully with a higher ceiling than, the guidelines that have been issued by most European governments to discourage any involvement in Israel's occupation and illegal colonies. To end, Palestinians look evil in the eye every day. We speak truth to power every day. Like our South African sisters and brothers, centuries of resisting colonialism have taught us to steadfast, to resist, and to insist on nothing less than our comprehensive rights. No siege, smears, bullying, or repression will ever deter us from pursuing our passionate, strategic, and ethically consistent struggle for what our late poet Mahmoud Darwish calls a life that is worth living. We count on you to help us bring this moment, the South African moment, closer to reality. 
United with people of conscience, fighting for justice the world over, we can and shall prevail. Thank you.